remember when I did the uh, drug rehabilitation program back in 1982, I paid $2,000 for it then, but uh, you know, it's 28 years later, and it's probably quite a bit, but it was not a residential program, it, it was just a, a process, like a, a process that you did. Just on vitamins, Just on vitamins, yes. Have you ever um, done the calculations to see what that would be in today's dollars? Close to you know, I hadn't. It is thirty thousand. I, I mean, other people told me it's about thirty thousand uh, dollars to go go to no, work. No, she said on. it is now. I was wondering if it's two thousand dollars in actually. Oh, oh but, but, but mine was equivalent. but mine was called the purification the program, program that was done through the Church of Scientology mm -hmm. versus Narconon. Okay. And so it's a, a different related, payment structure. Related question mm -hmm. to that, which is, I can I'm seeing where you're going with talking about Scientology, mm -hmm. which sounds like maybe it's a it is an organization. Right, um, but if we're thinking about more broadly the sociological questions mm -hmm. at root, for example, people call Islam cult, but there are 1.5 billion people on the planet not. In one well, but they're state. wrong. They're definitely wrong right. calling and them so, cult. But that's where, where we get. Well, that's why we have to distinguish. Clarifying right? what we mm -hmm. what we're what we're talking about, and then the, the problematic one problematic just underlying mm -hmm. issues is as soon as we get a label that we can that gets associated with. Mm -hmm things that generate bad feelings. Then there are the issues of the use of that label, the political use of that label. Mm -hmm. That's a that's another sort of it's a side effect, I guess, of even if we come up with a good, clear definition, uh, the way labeling gets used in our society, things become very and in our media, mm -hmm. things become really tricky. You know, when we were talking earlier, I mentioned to you the uh, CIA.gov yeah. website that gives um, lots of demographic in information about religions, and I'm pretty sure it was that website where I got the figure of over three different groups in America listed as cults on that website. And then uh, the other uh, statistic I've seen is actually a sociology textbook written by Brim and Lee, I think maybe the 2008 edition, that says there's over 2,800 different cults in America, so I found it interesting that the soci sociology textbook used that term. Oh no, they, that's what I was saying at the beginning, that our, our, when we teach students in the introduction of sociology, the textbook used, it uses cult, mm -hmm. denomination, and church. And yeah, it's slightly different, sex, yeah. Right. To well, discuss cult, anything, they're using church yeah. to talk about any religion, say, but they're using the term mm -hmm. church. Well, they use sect, the cult, right. sect, and then uh, church, Yes. And then you can go into denomination, I think, after yeah, that. Yeah, I think sect, not denomination. Mm -hmm. But right. sect is what they use in, in Europe mm -hmm. for the cults. So, you know, in Europe, uh, the Scientology would call it sect. Right, and I think what I'm getting at is that if, when we're trying to use a language mm -hmm. that we see as defining the, uh, attach itself to the characteristics of this type of group, mm -hmm. we get into more trouble than defining it in terms of how we respond to it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yes, I, that brings up a thought I had. Uh, I attended a, an event, I mentioned this to you earlier, International Cultic Studies Association mm -hmm. in July. And this is a group comprised of international uh, academics, lots of sociologists, but other fields as well. And um, some of them prefer to use the term new religious movement. Problem with that is, um, that ignores the uh, risk-bearing and harm-generating factors uh, that actually do exist in some of the groups. So, new religious movement is a total gloss. Yeah, that is. And that, that, that to me is a dangerous term because it camouflages the negative aspects of certain groups. The other problem with new religious movements as a term is that not all groups that are cultic are religious. And not all There's many political, and, yeah. and not all are problematic. So, yeah. so it, it gets down to, I think, the need for some labels and some categorization to, to clarify those factors so that the uh, academic community can refer to terms. But it's interesting, the word cult has been in use since the 60s at least. We'll have uh, you and then, and then uh, Craig. Yes. Um, do you know why um, these people start these cults and, I mean, do they really do think that they're um, a symbol of God or 
you know, why do they, when they get people in the cult, why do they take the people money? Um, why do they have the sex with the women and have all these kids? And also, when they get in the cult, like the big thing that happened, I guess, here the other year, um, the guy gave all the people a punch and they all died, you know. What what You're talking was, about people's temple? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What what's the purpose of that? What is the cause of that? You know, um, I remember when I was um, in the military, and I was in Fort Jackson. Um, I know the missionary. What are they? The Latter Day Saints or mm -hmm. the whatever. Okay. Um, some of them are nice, but some of them can be very um, pushy. Um, they noticed that I did know the word, but I grew up in the background of Church of God in Christ. And when they noticed that you know know the word, they want to put you as a missionary. And I mean, they will hound you and hound you. And okay, I have an attitude, so I have a very short <laughs> temper. And just being honest, you know, coming from Michigan, you know, you all down here are very um, mannerable you know you all greet us hello how you doing up north <laughs> we just look at you because we won't say a word to you you know that's just how we are and you know and i couldn't understand the concept of that you know because i know cults are out there you know it was with us in the military but you just didn't know who they were you know till after you know we got from work or whatever and who they were but i was just always wondering about the cult issue of is that like a symbol that the person do they look at themselves as a symbol of God or why do they do that? Well, you've asked a lot of really good questions and you've asked a lot of questions. I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take up a few of them. Maybe some of you want to take up others. Um, let's talk about Scientology uh, to answer, to use as an example to answer some of your questions. The motive, um, L. Ron Hubbard was the founder. He was a science fiction writer. Um, I think he was, um, I'll go on record for saying this because I'm saying this in my book, but I describe him as a, a megalomaniac. He, he had a, a psychopolitical uh, motive and, that, and because he was a megalomaniac, he believed that his ideas should be worshiped and followed. And I believe that he had the motive to control people and set up a very persuasive argument uh, to lure people into following a spiritual path and you know what is what is it how can you determine you know a person's motive for why they would do that I, that's why I say it falls under megalomania and his desire to build a church to make a lot of money I really believe that his motive was power and greed and in fact he goes on record back in uh, in his science fiction days, he made a, a statement that if if you really want to know how to make a million dollars, start a religion. So back in, you know, this was quoted, came out in Reader's Digest years ago while he was attending a science fiction event. And uh, so the church has been trying to, you know, annihilate that comment and keep that from public reach for years. But that was a statement he made, and I, I believe to this day that that was an absolute motive, greed and power. And he initially, he initially started it as a form of psychology, but he was laughed off by the psychological community who were more true scientists than he. He was just this megalomaniac who thought his ideas were real important. And so he started it as psych a psychology, but then he changed it from that to an applied religious philosophy and then he went to the transition that it's a religion and it really appears that he changed it to a religion to get a tax exemption so that he could make the money that he brought in tax-free and and i'll support what she says because having worked at the international management level of scientology i am very familiar with the processes of it as a business 